Hello everybody, it's Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries and you know the emergency call in the United States is 911 and 911 has such a amazing significance. We know when it's emergency we look at 911. Well, I'm not so much into the Bible codes. I'm not saying they're not real or true. I just have not researched them to know the Bible codes and apparently according to the Bible codes in Hebrew every certain letter is equals up to a certain message in the scriptures and it's an interesting thing I want to check out one day but I was reading my favorite book of uh, my favorite prophet Jeremiah and I said let me go to Jeremiah 911 and see what it says and it, it is an amazing thing that not only was happening to Judah but is happening today to us and basically back then Judah was rejecting the message of our Creator they were not keeping Torah they were living against Torah, just like it says in Hosea, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Well, in the Hebrew, that actually says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of the Torah. We all have worldly knowledge, but it was the rejection of the Torah that the people were destroyed. Well, in Jeremiah 9, it talks about the rejection, how, how Judah rejected the Torah. So a wonderful creator rejected Judah and uh, put... Uh, destruction amongst them to I won't say punish them because they so-called punish themselves by not being obedient to his instructions and guidelines just like we punish ourselves when we want to live against his plan he says he has a plan for us and it is good it is for hope and not disaster well the plan that people want for themselves is a different story there's another scripture that says uh, there's a path before each person uh, that seems right in their own eyes but ends in destruction or ends in death. And that's the way it is. We have our Creator's ways and we have our ways. And our goal in life, or one of our goals in life, should be where our ways line up with His ways. But the reality is, we're not born that way. We live in a, in a, in a, in a fleshly body that wants things that go against what He wants. So whenever I meet a homosexual and they say, well, this is just the way I was born, so I can't help it. Just because you were born some way doesn't mean you can't help it. I mean, I'm a man, and I know men have a desire to go off and be with many different types of women. But our Creator wants us to be with one woman. So I resist that temptation, that urge, because I want my ways to go along with His instructions and His guideline. And the same way a homosexual can go against his urges and live according to our Creator's instructions and not lay with another male or another female, if they're a male or female. And there's other ways. It's not just that. He doesn't only call homosexuality abomination or, or polygamy abomination. He calls fornication ab abomination. He calls stealing, cheating, lying an abomination. All these things people are doing on a regular basis. Uh, it's called an abomination. If it goes against our Creator's instructions and you're doing it, He considers you as wicked. And He gave instructions all the time in the Scriptures, this wicked nation. And what made them wicked? They were living in sin. And what is sin? Living against His guidelines and instructions. I hear many people say, but I'm a good person. Well, can you be a good person and still be living in sin? You could be good according to the world's ways. But if you're living in sin, he considers you a wicked person, not a good person. So if you're the type of person that says, well, I have three girlfriends and they all know about it and it's open relationships and so nobody cares, so I'm a good person. I give when I'm walking down the street, I see a homeless man on the street and I might give him some money. Well, that's great for you and great for the homeless man. But you know what? There's nothing in scripture that says if you don't give that man money, it's not a sin or it is a sin. You know, we want to look at what the scriptures have to say about this thing. Yes, we want to help our brother in need. But we can't do that and then go ahead living against our Creator's instructions on a regular basis. Well, let's go and look at Jeremiah 9-11 and give an example of how Jerusalem was just in destruction because the people of Judah were living against the instructions of our Creator. And we'll pick it up in 9-11. Prior to that in 9, it was talking about this. But there's something very interesting I want to talk about today because I'm a health teacher. And I just did a, a, a retreat and one of the speakers that was talking about the not only the chemicals in our water, but the radiation in our water. And we have no idea from Fukushima, it's affecting people on the East Coast and West Coast. That's not just in the water, it's in the air. 
and when it rains, it's getting down on our crops and just poisoning us. And there's radiation in people found in their urine through testing from the west coast to the east coast. And not all of it's only from uh, Fukushima in Japan. If you're living within 100 miles from a nuclear power plant, there's a good chance there's radiation in your water that you drink on a regular basis. Yes, your water is poisoned. So when we consider that, let's... Uh, so when we consider that, let's look what it says here in 9-11 of Jeremiah. Remember 9-11, the emergency call. So in 9-11, it basically says, And I will make Jerusalem ruins, a den of jackals, and I will make the cities of Judah a desolation without anyone living there. No one's going to be there. It's going to be like a ghost town. But 12 says, Who is the wise man that can understand this? And he to him the mouth of our Creator has spoken, that he may declare it. Why does the land perish? So that was the question in Jeremiah 9. Why does the land perish? And the answer was, why does the land perish? It is burnt up like the wilderness so that no one passes through it. No one could even go through this land, let alone live there. And why? And our Creator says, and this is 9.13 of Jeremiah, because they are forsaken my instructions. They have forsaken my guidelines. They have forsaken my Torah, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, and have not walked in it. So they didn't listen and obey. And those were the instructions that our Creator had for us. He said, listen and obey. He didn't just say listen. He said, listen and obey. And here it is. Jeremiah 9.13 is just the same reason why we're in destruction today, why this powerful land of the so-called United States is, is going down very quickly. It says, because they have forsaken my Torah, which I set before them, they have not obeyed my voice, and they have not walked in my instructions. We see in the book of Judges, every time Judah and, and the Israelites would follow the guidelines and instructions of our Creator, all the disasters and destruction would go away. But when they didn't listen and didn't obey, destruction would be amongst them. It set up an example for us today of how we should live. And we see the same exact thing today. When we live in, 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 with His instructions and follow His guidelines, there's no destruction at all. But when we disobey, that's when the destruction comes. Verse 14 of Jeremiah says, But they have walked after the stubbornness of their own heart and after the other gods which their fathers taught them. So these other New Age so-called gods, which really aren't gods at all, they're just statues or some other make-believe thing. Uh, the, and they call them Baal in scriptures, which were these other insignificant so-called gods with a lowercase g. Uh, but, but they have walked after these other gods, but it says in 9.14 of Jeremiah, but have walked after the stubbornness of their own heart. Remember I told you it was a scripture, I believe it was in Proverbs, and it says uh, that people will follow their own heart and, and, and the way that seems right to them, but will end in death. Uh, now we're all going to die, and it's not talking about a physical death there, it's talking about a spiritual death, because they were following the stubbornness of their own heart. And they didn't want to say, well, what does Yahweh want me to do? What does our wonderful Creator want me to do? And that's why they got themselves in trouble. And, and, and this is what I'm going to end with today, is verse 915. And in verse 915 it says, So our Creator of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, says this, Behold, I will feed them, these people, with wormwood. Now that's not a good thing. Uh, wormwood is known to just eat out and destroy not only parasites, uh, but it's going to affect even healthy organisms and cells. It, it, it's, it's, it's something that uh, is, is not a good thing. It says, I will uh, feed them with wormwood and make them drink poisonous waters. And make them drink poisonous waters. And you know what's happening today, but we don't follow his guidelines and instructions. We are drinking poisonous waters on a regular basis. This radiation water, this chemical loaded water that is destructing uh, our system and, and, and disrupting and destructing us and, and that's what's happening. Let's turn real quick to Jeremiah 23.15 to talk see more about this these, these destructive, uh, this poisonous water. Jeremiah 23.15 goes on to talk about this saying
So our Creator of hosts says this concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink poisonous waters, for wickedness has gone forth from the prophets of Jerusalem into all the land. So now when it says here uh, in verse 15, or actually verse 14, uh, which they, their fathers have taught them about the, uh, the, 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 the other gods, the, not the God, the uh, wonderful creator Yahweh, but the other gods of the land, and, and change them to follow those. Well, that's exactly what not only the people were doing, but the prophets of the time were doing. Uh, the so-called prophets, not the prophets of a wonderful creator. And, and, and he said the same thing for them. I will give them the poisonous water, and I will give them the warm wood to eat because they are taking my people, uh, just like their fathers were taking the people away from the message of our Creator. That's what they were doing. So uh, we need to get right with this, folks. Uh, we need to start with uh, the understanding of, uh, if we're destroyed for lack of knowledge of His Torah, uh, the answer is going to be to eliminate what's causing the problem. And if the problem is lack of knowledge of Torah, we need the knowledge of Torah to continue to excel. And we need to learn that. And it's right here in the Scriptures, folks. The Torah is the first five books of the Bible. And it starts in Genesis, which in Hebrew means Bereshit. The Bible goes in Genesis all the way to Revelation, and every single word in between is important for us. As Timothy said, every word is profitable for man. And every single word. When he wrote that, there was no New Covenant at that time, or some people might say the New Testament. So every word is profitable for man. Now those of you that are watching this that say, well, that's just living under the law. Uh, well, no, it's living by the instructions of our Creator, which He wanted us to do. We're saved by the blood of Yeshua Messiah. Uh, and because we're saved, we should have every desire to follow His instructions and guidelines. And uh, so, as He says in the Scriptures, all will be well with you. If you have any comments or questions about Jeremiah 9, uh, post them below the video or any other questions about the Scriptures, and I will get to them. Uh, and this poisonous water, I have more videos on my uh, my health site on rawlifehealthshow.com that talks more about Fukushima and the radiation in the water. You can go to that website and see that. And until then, everybody, I just pray that you will look more into His Word. And if you want, as it says in the Scriptures, all to be well with you, follow His Word. And not some, but all will be well with you. In His eyes, not yours. Okay? Because sometimes we think things are good in in our eyes are bad in our eyes but it's not up to us it's up to him and we have to see what he wants us to see to see with his eyes and that's how we'll be blessed all right post your kinds of questions below the video until then everybody have a great day and shalom shalom come out of the world oh my people seek the truth avoid the evil learn yahweh's ways torah life ministries come out of the world Oh,